it's great to see you again. I'm just going to change my angle so you can see my face. Hello everyone, great to see you. So, we have already done some cajon where we were thinking about cajon being some like Peruvian music, but we've also done some cajon where we're thinking of Calypso cajon music from Trinidad. Well, a cajon nowadays, when we hear cajon played most of the time, it's a really popular instrument, but actually most of the time it's being played almost like a drum kit. In fact, you know, if you listen to the radio and you hear on the radio there's a live band playing, most radio studios where they are presenting are not big enough for a whole band to set up. You know, think about a whole drum kit. It takes up a lot of space. So very often the drummer is playing just a cajon. So it's really useful if you know how to play some drum kit rhythms on the cajon. So, so useful. So the first thing we need to understand about is something that we call ghost notes. Now I'm just going to change my camera angle so you can see my cajon down here. So ghost notes. Okay, ghost notes are when we play up here in the tone position and we're going to play basically really gently. So you see they're barely audible. So you first have to decide which hand you're going to start with. So I'm going to start with, with this hand here. I couldn't work out how to get in the camera. This hand. And it's going to be like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. So you see they're really, really gentle. And I've got them so I can hear a little bit of the buzz a little bit of the buzz of the wires from my cajon. Okay, so that is my first thing. Now, drummers, we always count going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So I'm going to say that out loud at the same time as playing. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Great. Now, the, one of the simplest drum kit parts you can play is called a straight eights rhythm. And here's our straight eights groove. You'll recognise it. If you know anyone who plays drums, you probably would have heard them play that rhythm. So, to break that down, I'm still just doing that one and two and three and four and as my ghost notes. But what actually I'm doing, I am putting number one as a bass. So I'm going... One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay. In fact, I'm going to do number three as a bass as well. It's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Now, we also need to add in the snare drum part as well. So the snare drum is we're going to create our louder slap. Okay? So we're going to put that on the two and the four. So we could think, instead of one and two and three and four and, with our bass, we've got now bass and two and bass and four and bass and two and bass and four. And it's a little bit tricky to keep track of the numbers. So the easiest way to think of it is... Bass and snip and 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 bass and And stop. Great. Now, the hard thing about this is to keep all the ands gentle. So actually, that's going to be my weaker hand, playing all the ands. And my bass and my snare are going to be louder. That's a really tricky thing to do, to play one hand gently, but the other hand louder to hear the bass and the snare. So see, that's how loud that hand's going. Moving quite a lot to get that nice, loud sound. But then the... That's being really gentle. See, that hand's barely moving at all. Hello, 
Have a go. Three and this and sit and this and sit and this and sit and this and sit and this and sit. Now, the thing is, as a drummer, we're also to keep track of how many times we've done that in a row. So, bass and snare and just once is half a bar. So it's going to be bass and snare and bass and snare and that's one bar, because that was bass and snare and bass and snare and bass and snare and bass is like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and bass and snare and bass and snare and. We're going to do three bars, oh, where's my hand on? Three bars of this rhythm. Bass and snare and 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 stop. Two, three, let's try. Bass and snare, bass and snare. Second bar. Third bar. Stop. Two, three, go. And stop. Two, three, and. Stop. Two, three, and. Stop. Two, three, and. Now, I'm just going to bring down the volume a little bit so you can hear me talk as well. What would be lovely in the bar's rest. We're going to do what's called a fill. Now a fill for a drummer, sometimes called a fill-in. We've talked about that in previous videos. You've got to make sure you can basically play whatever you want. So I'll give you an example. Here it comes. One, two, three, four. So there you go, that's my little fill. We're going to do another one. One, two, three, four. So how about you do a fill this time? Great, well done. So, I'm just going to swap my camera angle over so you can see me again a bit better. There we go. So, that is a really nice simple rhythm. We call that, as I said, the straight eighths rhythm. If you say to any drum kit player, play me a straight eighths rhythm, they'll go bass and snit and bass and snit and. Why is it called straight eighths rhythm? Well, if you count up how many notes are one and two and three and four and count all the ends, one and two and three and four and there's eight notes. That's why it's called straight eighths. But why the word straight? Well, basically, the rhythm is not swingy. It's not one and two and three, di, 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 rinky, dinky, dinky. It's just one and two and three and four. It's very sort of straight, even notes. That's why it's called a straight eighth rhythm. Very simple. So, but that's sort of a very simple rhythm. We also have in drumming something we call sixteenth notes. Now, if you are a classically trained musician, you might call sixteenth notes semiquavers. The reason why often drummers call them sixteenth notes is because, like we had eight notes in the bar for our, is eight? Yeah, eight notes for our um, straight eighths rhythm. Sixteenth notes have sixteen notes. Now, the way drummers normally count them is they go one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. That's how we count it. So. You're still saying the numbers one, two, three, and four on the pulse. So it's one, two, three, where I'm going to clap. One, two, three, four. But then you're just going to add the eanders in between. So it's one eander, two eander, three eander, four eander, one eander, two eander, three eander, four eander. Sometimes people might go semi quaver, semi quaver. But the thing is, though, semi quaver has got four syllables. That gives you the right speed, but it doesn't tell you where about you are in the bar because you can't do the numbers one, two, three, four as well. See what I mean? So one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So again, you can chat to any drummer and they will talk like that. It sounds like a drummer's language when they have their own little drummer's language. They speak things like that together. So 
We're going to put that on our cajon. I'm just going to change my camera angle again so you can see the cajon nicely. So here we go with our cajon, and we're going to go one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So just like we do with a straight H with them, I'm starting with my strong hand. One e and a two e. Now, the thing is, you've got to try to keep those words in your head as well. A bit of a tongue twister. One knee and a two e and a three e and a. We need to speed up a little bit. One, two, three, and one. Similar to before, we're going to make the number one a bass and also number three a bass, and then the two and the four will make our loud, loud slap. So it's going to go one, two, and you know what to do. Go one, e and the two, e and the three, and the four, e and the one, e and the two, e and the three, e and the four. E and the See if you can join in. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. And stop. Great, you get the idea how it all fits together. You know what is really, really clever about all of this is that. All I'm doing is just one hand after the other. One knee and a two knee and a right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, the whole time. But just because I'm moving my hands around in different positions on the cajon, I'm creating that lovely rhythm. One knee and a two knee and a one knee and a two knee and a three knee and a four knee and a five. So then what we can do, we can experiment around a little bit and see, we can just move our hands in different places. So um, here we are, I'm going to start with that same rhythm, but then I'm going to keep my hands going like that, and I'm just going to start to move my hands in different places around the gohon to create a different rhythm. So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. Okay, so that's all we've done, we're going to vary a bit. one e and a two e and a go and i'm going to do the this one you join in but then you just experiment around a bit on your cajon or your junk cajon whenever you're playing see if you can move your hands around a little bit to try and get some different rhythms here we go one two three here we go and Join in do some other things as well. One, two, three, four, and stop. Well done. So 
the idea of this, you know, the, the options are kind of endless for what you could do on your cajon doing this. So can you experiment around, come up with some nice little grooves that you like the idea of doing, but just keeping your hands doing that the whole time, but just vary the position on your cajon to get differences of when the bass and when the snare happens. What I would say for this kind of style of drum kit playing we're playing, the, the snare drum, that slap sound we get, needs to always be on number two and number four. So one, you end it, two, you end it, three, four. Always there. Try and not get it anywhere else because that will just change the whole feel of it. Also, one thing you often find that when you're playing along with a band, the drummer and the bass guitarist, they need to be good friends. They need to watch each other because whatever rhythm the bass guitarist is playing when they're playing their little bass line, the bass, the drum kit player or the cajon player needs to make sure the bass sound on their drum kit is kind of matching the same rhythm. So that's something you have to kind of work on a little bit. So it will change from song to song, depending on how it works. So I hope that's some lots of ideas that you've kind of taken. Don't forget this is not the end of the lesson because there's still a quiz to go and have a look at the um, quiz and see if you can answer everything because I've given you a lot of facts about being a drummer today. Very important stuff. And then join us next time where I'm going to be with the rest of my friends again and we're going to be learning how to develop this further by adding in some other things. Thanks so much. Bye.